Good day. Welcome to Selectman's Corner. My name is Frank Panorfi. I'm chairman of the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Sandwich. And today we're uh, really starting the first of what I hope will be a series of programs to keep the public in Sandwich informed of the actions, issues, and a whole host of things going on in the Town of Sandwich. Uh, for our first session, I have as a guest uh, someone that I think uh, most of you do know. Uh, he is the Vice Chairman of the Sandwich Board of Selectmen, and he's also President of the Sandwich Economic Initiative Corporation, Mr. John Kennan. John, welcome. Thank you, Frank, for having me. Well, thank you for being our first guest. All right. That's important. As I said, the, the purpose of this program really is to kind of keep informed uh, or people informed of what's going on, not only in terms of issues, but things that we're talking about that we can, in fact, divulge in the way of plans for the town. Um, for today's show, uh, what I'd like to talk about is something that was significant uh, to me, and that was really uh, the special town meeting, which took place approximately uh, 11 days ago. So having said that, let me kind of throw a question out to you. Okay. Uh, on that uh, particular warrant, uh, there were a number of items dealing with uh, well, essentially economic development, uh, but there was one that was peripherally and uh, associated with economic development, more so uh, in terms of tourism. That was really the $150,000 appropriation. So uh, can you talk a little bit about what the purpose of that? I know your role as selectman, you know what it is, but we want to start educating and keeping the public informed. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, I believe what you're referring to is uh, the appropriation for the permitting strategy and securing of permits for the, one of the town's biggest assets, and that is um, our beach area. Uh, down by the breakwater, town neck, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, and I do agree with you that um, this, is, um, this is an issue, uh, the issue of restoration, uh, maintenance, and uh, sustainability of our beaches is, is key, is key to um, tourism in town. Um, because, uh, you know, whether we want to believe it or not, um, there's the quintessential sandwich village, there's the ponds, there's the woods and the walking trails and everything, but people come to the Cape for beaches. Right. And walking on the beaches, spending time with their families. And our beach, as we know it, in this particular area of town, is evaporating. It's just uh, right before our eyes, just becoming less and less and less of a beach. It is that. And um, the $150,000 will go a long way as an initial step and making sure that we can do something about restoration of okay. our beach area. Let's talk about the $150,000. Does it mean we're going to be going out and buying a lot of sand and backfilling? Um, there would be multiple <laughs> zeros to the 10th power <laughs> to purchase the amount of sand we need. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, this is not going to be to purchase. Uh, you, you kind of alluded to it in terms of the permitting process. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular uh, project has been going on for years and years. And uh, let's talk about the project itself, because I think it's important for people to understand a whole host of things associated with it, and that there are two components to it. Do you want to address the inlet and then the beach uh, restoration in terms of the permitting that needs to be done for that, and, or the finalization of permitting? Well, I hate to do this, but I was going to turn it right around and ask you, <laughs> since you've been so vocal about this for so long, you can't I have that. <laughs> so I think I think the, the, the viewers uh, should hear from uh, Frank Penarvi <laughs> on this particular issue. So I'll be the host for a few minutes. Well, here. You're, you're right. Uh, when I ran for re-election in May of 2011, this was my top issue. I have believed for years that we have a responsibility uh, to do the permitting. That's, that's something that's essential before you can begin to fix the, what the problem is. Having said that, the problem is not of our making, okay? Right. E everybody knows what the, what the issue is. Uh, the people created the problem have kind of conceded that over the last 40 or 50 years through various reports. Even our own consultant has kind of said that. The problem is essentially the jetties that extend into Cape Cod Bay. Uh, more specifically, the western side of the canal, which extends mm -hmm. even further than the eastern side. Because if you look at Sandwich, which is on the other side, mm -hmm. you know, you've got Scusset Beach. Am I wrong in that? Hard to believe, but Sandwich 
does exist as it always has on the other side of the canal. It is. The canal came after. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and I said during the campaign that uh, I believe, uh, number one, that first of all, Sandwich doesn't have the capacity to fix this problem. The resources, it's an astronomical number. Secondly, we should have the people who've created the problem fix it. And that means to me, the Army Corps of Engineers not only fix the problem on our beach, which has created the problem on the immediate beach, which is east of the eastern jetty, but all the way down to the inlet, which is a part of the initial problem, I believe. Um, so that means that uh, they would fix it and subsequently, on an ongoing basis, continue to maintain it to prevent it from happening again. Some people say, you're crazy, it's never gonna happen. I don't think that we should give up on that effort. Well, I agree with you. We shouldn't give up on the effort, it's especially when uh, the Army Corps, I'll say it, the Army Corps of Engineers has, uh, by their own admission, kind of owned up to the fact that uh, but for the uh, development or construction of the breakwater, we wouldn't be having these discussions with them and having to secure permits over the years to take the spoils from the canal to try to restore the beach area and so forth. So to the essence, uh, I guess, right to the core of what you're saying, no pun intended, um, we need to uh, make ourselves very clear. It's a very firm position I have, and I believe like yours, that um, the, there has to be the accountability on the cause part, not just in the near term, but for the long term as well, in terms of a, um, a continuing services contract, if you will so that they continually maintain it. Uh, we didn't create the problem, they did. Do, do you think that um, we should be going to the core at this point in time to suggest that I think we have done it kind of more informally, they know our position, but what do we need to do first before we are able to say, here it is guys, and it really I think is still related to the $150,000 and, it, and it's really the permitting so can you talk a little bit about the permitting and what's essentially involved, time periods more specifically? Um, well, I'd like to think that uh, the immediate steps would be to, again, to memorialize some of our, our thoughts, our concerns, um, some avenues that we could explore regarding remedies. You know, the best use of the $150,000, it's a lot of money, it you'd is. take that 150000 if I handed it to you, and I would as well, but it's a de minimis amount of money in terms of the scope yeah. or the magnitude of the problem we have. So I think um, a letter is in order, a meeting's in order, um, a very open, very frank, candid meeting to get something done. Um, you and I were part of a, a meeting that took place, I think maybe it was in June? Yes. We met the Secretary of Environmental Affairs, Mr. Sullivan. Senate President Murray came down. I believe our state rep, uh, Randy Hunt, was Randy there. Randy Hunt was there. District. Yes. Uh, so, Leckwoman uh, Grunman was there. Yep. And um, there were a number of other staff people from the State House. And I think they all got it. I think they all understood uh, with a lot of clarity that there is a problem. It's a matter of how do we all work together to address the problem? Because if I was listening to Senate President Murray, the way I believe I should have been listening to her, um, she was saying not only is this a problem within my district here as it relates to Sandwich, right. but as you travel up the coast into my backyard in Plymouth, we're having these issues with erosion. And further up the coast into Marshfield, they're experiencing problems. So this is, and this may go to the point of your question or what you're looking for, this is gonna take a concerted, concerted effort by the people in Sandwich, uh, at the local level, the state level, but all the way up the coast. And I dare say that we probably should be combining our efforts on a federal level yeah. on the perimeter of the continental United States to get like-minded people on these issues to do something. Yeah. To, um, Go ahead. I, I totally agree. And I think uh, for me, um, when I first heard that, mm -hmm. I kind of mulled it over in my own mind. I said, you know, the reality is this, if we try to do something alone, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. will be completely ignored. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Also, at that meeting in June, on the beaches, ironically mm -hmm. enough, uh, and I think the distance, uh, we were kind of halfway between uh, the inlet portion and the eastern jetty mm -hmm. when we kind of were discussing, so we were able to see mm -hmm. both problems mm -hmm. uh, almost instantly. Uh, we were asked one thing, and which kind of led to the warrant article, and that one thing was, where is, you know, your plan? Mm -hmm. Have you been permitted? So the $150,000 is a key piece, you know, to this whole permitting process. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we've acknowledged that. Mm -hmm. There is a sense of, and I heard it at a special town meeting also by some of the people, or a couple of folks who stepped to the podium, expressing the need to do something quickly. We would love to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not in a position to do that because we need to complete the permitting process. There needs to be a cost. There needs to be the identification of a source of funding, you know, to be able to uh, solve the problem. I don't know whether you agree with that assessment or not. Oh, I do. Okay. I do agree with that. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to move forward. I know uh, the Woods Hole people who are consultant mm -hmm. will be continuing this. And I, I think we've been told somewhere between 18 months, 24 months to complete that particular process. Mm -hmm. So. We're there, halfway there anyway. Yes, we, we're doing something. Yeah. The status but, quo on that particular issue is not an option. Right. There, there was another piece, and I know you and I have uh, exchanged this discussion uh, on camera a number of times with respect to the correlation between the erosion in our beach and the Katrina problem in New Orleans several years ago. I, do you want to talk about that uh, particular? Sure, yeah. sure. You're, you're the attorney sure. here, so yeah, you express but, these you know, things. Uh, well, anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Uh, Frank and I have been proponents of, um, you know, seizing an opportunity to avail ourselves of a decision that the circuit court uh, with respects to Inray Katrina and the damages that Hurricane Katrina um, caused um, in that area, um, specifically to the levees and the breaches of the levees. And ultimately what ended up happening was the court found that the Army Corps was in fact negligent. Damages um, did um, come out of that case. People were paid for those damages. Um, they're talking levees in the Enray Katrina case. Right. We have breakwaters, right. whatever you want to call them up here. Some folks call them sand catches because yeah. that's what they're doing. Groins. Whatever. Groins, whatever. <laughs> the point is, is you know, it, it's really not a matter of the levee connotation, the, you know, or the, the, the breakwater so much as um, the acts. The resulting damage. Of the Army Corps when they built these structures and the resulting damages. And I don't want to get too lawyer-like, but um, it's, it's quite simple. There's um, a duty, there's a breach, there's causation, there's damages. And were these damages foreseeable in the construction of these levees and here, these breakwaters we have? Were there foreseeable consequences of these actions? Did people pay attention enough? I don't know. I remember um, when this came up the last time when at one of our meetings, I threw out the the Latin legal term of racist loquitor. And, and, and Thing can, speaks for itself. Exactly, exactly. You know, mm -hmm. that's where it is, so. Mm -hmm. um, another item which uh, came up at special town meeting, uh, and, and by the way, I'll say this about special town. I thought this was a significant special town meeting for this particular town, and a win for the town of Sandwich, mm -hmm. a win for the Board of Selectmen, a win for the Sandwich Economic Initiative Corporation mm -hmm. in terms of the work that's being done to expand the tax base through commercial mm -hmm. development. So ha having said that, one of the other, uh, there were a lot of items mm -hmm. on it that dealt with this. There were a bunch of zoning items mm -hmm. that were key in terms of the things that needed to be done consistent with the local comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. which has been approved by the town, as well as the endorsement of the SEIC. Mm -hmm. But the one that more immediately will help us, I think, is the granting to the Board of Selectmen the right to negotiate an easement 
to put a road in. Do you, do you have any comments about that? And some, I know we can't talk about the specifics because we haven't done anything in the specific, but we will be soon. I do. Um, What's the advantage of that? Well, um, I'm pleased with the outcome, the vote on that. The legislative body spoke clearly to uh, granting the need to grant the authority to the Board of Selectmen to negotiate um, an easement with uh, one of our major stakeholders up in the South Sandwich Village Center um, area of town. Um, that easement means a lot. We're going to give someone the right to do something, namely a roadway that will go essentially from oh, almost the corner of Katuit Road in Route 130 all the way down through Heritage Park, through um, the Canterbury Plaza, and ultimately ending up um, exiting onto Quaker Meeting House Road. Um, without getting into too many of the details, as you just alluded to, um, what's significant about that road is it will have a catalytic effect on any and all development that will ever occur up there. It will allow developers to contrast their lens a little bit more about what they may want to do. May, uh, th it may cause them to readjust their plans, but it's all for the right reasons. Right. Because we're going to have this wonderful road system. It's going to alleviate some of the burden on Katuit Road in 130. If people are inclined to or have a specific need to purchase something at one of the stores in that area, they're going to go in onto that road, that secondary road, which is um, in and of itself um, a lot of value. I think it's even more than, you know, the end result of seeing buildings come up. I think it's getting something done. The selectmen, and uh, you've got this public-private partnership. Anybody that knows me and hears me talking about this public-private partnership all the time, but this is a perfect, perfect example of the town working with a private landowner, creating something, actually doing something that's going to benefit so many people. It's a feel-good thing. The selectmen are doing something. Are we throwing something out there? as we've done two other times, to kind of make people feel good? Uh, or do you have a different perspective of that, given the history of this particular piece of property? Uh, I understand. I understand the meaning <laughs> feel of Feel free. I understand free. the meaning of this This is a question. candid discussion. It is at that. You're not going to hurt my feelings either, John. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Right. But the reality <laughs> is, is that RFPs were issued for development of the land. And for a whole host of reasons, they just didn't work out. That was then. We're talking about today going forward. Culturally, business-wise, I think people have changed um, their attitude uh, in a very positive, accepting way. Um, more people are understanding the need for broadening the commercial tax base. Um, given the economic climate we have today, people are talking more often than not about a loss of jobs in their family, their neighbors losing jobs. Right. We're talking about job creation. I think we're all going down. We're heading in the right direction collectively as a town, working with developers potentially. And that's where this road comes in. I mean, we are all trying to make a concerted, concerted effort to do something great for the town of Sandwich. Uh, I've said time and time again, having been a part of those two previous mm -hmm. RFPs, um, that I've learned, and I think the town has learned, both from a standpoint of what to do right and what to not to do as well from those kinds of things. So although they may not have been successful, the learning lessons are something that we can in fact apply moving forward. Uh, at least that's my perspective. Yeah, you know, there have been critics. You know, you could have, you should have. If I were in charge, I would have done this. Yeah. Well, we all hear those things. Yeah. But, you know, in a very cumulative-like way, we have learned from some of I don't want to call them mistakes, but maybe oversight. You know, hindsight's always 2020. Sure. So we're, we're, we're gathering, we're gathering all that information, and I think we're learning along the way, and we're broad-minded. Um, as I said earlier, the climate's a heck of a lot better in terms of uh, development because a lot of us, or the, you know, the majority of us that are so 
interested in bringing this town into the 21st century, for real, in terms of economic development, uh, very mindful of all the hard work that's been done to preserve the past. Yeah. You know, when you look around, we're in this great hall here in the town hall. I'm looking out at some 19th century homes. The church is out the window just yeah. behind me. And, yeah. you know, this is all wonderful. We would never want to upset that. Yeah. And we're striking a nice balance, I think. Well, you hit on something um, in addition to expanding commercial job base that I feel, and I know you do as well, and that is this job creation thing. Mm -hmm. We recently had the consultants for the SEIC come in uh, to the Board of Selectmen and talk about the development of the mm -hmm. South Sandwich Village, and the numbers that were shown to me uh, are wonderful, mm -hmm. and I understand their estimates and all of that, and it's going to take time to build it, but when you can say that uh, if that project ever came to true fruition, you can create some 2,000 jobs and maybe expand the tax base uh, an additional $1.2 million mm -hmm. when you have situations uh, in this town where we have the power plant, we don't know what's going to happen to that. When you have uh, the residents, the uh, residential taxpayers saying enough is enough, and as you say, you know, jobs, there are some of these people are not working. Those on Social Security haven't received a COLA adjustment in three years, you know. Uh, it, it's, it's something that needs to be done and the time is right. Having said that, there's another piece. We can, as a town, as boards of selectmen, as SEIC members, do our part, but developers, you know, who've been looking for this opportunity need to step up. So uh, you'll have the final word because we're going to be wrapping up. We've touched on um, so many different issues. Um, I think what resonates so loudly in everything we've talked about is uh, the communication by the residents in the town of Sandwich saying, okay, let's get it done, right. and I'll leave you with that. Very good. <laughs> okay. Well, again, uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, our objective here is not to have me as being a moderator continuously, but to have various selectmen sit in the seat, have guests of their choosing, to be able to discuss all of these uh, important matters to the town. So having said that, thank you very much and look forward to uh, your tuning in the next time. Thank you.